Outside of Lyonis, Alioni, a young squire, walks through a desecrated residential area with an older knight. They stop at the site of a bloody battle, where dozens of holy knights lay dead. The knight explains that all of them were killed in the blink of an eye by only seven people, called the Seven Deadly Sins. Ten years later, near Cain's village, a figure clad in full suit of armor shambles across the fields. Nearby, at the Boar Hat Bar, many patrons visit for drinks and food, though the bar's owner Smeliotas says that they have a reputation for good booze and terrible food. A man bursts into the bar and states that he saw the infamous Rust Knight. One bar patron says that the Rust Knight is just a made-up story to scare kids into behaving. He points out the wanted posters and explains that the seven deadly sins had massacred holy knights, including the Grand Master, ten years ago. Loud creaking noises stop conversations in the bar, and Hawk, a talking pig, says he can smell rust. The door swings open, and a large armored figure shambles in, causing the patrons to evacuate. The figure falls backward, revealing an unconscious ugly disgusting looking girl. The owner brings her back to his room and checks to make sure that she's a woman much to the frustration of Hawk. When she wakes up, she asks what happened and where she is. He replies that she suddenly passed out in his bar. He makes food for her and she looks at the shitty looking food, but she still eats his disgusting food like his face as she begins to cry. <coughs> Fucking hell. She explains that she's looking for the sins. Outside, Alioni and the Knights of Beard of the Mountain Cat demand entry so that they can arrest the Rust Knight. Alioni recounts his experiences at the uprising ten years ago, telling them not to underestimate the sins. His team doesn't believe him. The knights shout at the bar again for the Rust Knight to come out, and Hawk comes over dressed up with pieces of armor. Alioni shouts at the owner, frustrated with the turn of events while the woman tries to sneak out of the bar. One of the knights notices her, and Alioni calls for them to inform Twigo. The knights chase her through the forest, and Alioni muses that he can finally be an apprentice holy knight if he catches her. However, Hawk bolts in and knocks out all of them. The owner asks why she's looking for the sins, and she replies that she's trying to stop the holy knights. Hawk questions this, saying that the holy knights are heroes who protect Lyonis. However, the woman reveals that King Bartra is not actually sick and that the holy knights have commenced a coup d'etat to start a war. Though she knows they're considered criminals, the sins are her only hope in stopping the holy knights. Suddenly, Twigo cuts the ground below them, causing them to fall down the cliff. He tells the rest of the knights to write up a report about the casualties, but the owner lands safely in front of them with Hawk, Alioni, and the woman in tow. Twigo recognizes the woman's earring as a mark of the royal family, concluding that she is Elizabeth, the third princess of Lyonis. Elizabeth, Hawk, and the owner flee into the forest. Hoping to accidentally kill her, Twigo cuts through the entire forest, causing hundreds of trees to fall. The owner shields her from the impact with his body. However, Elizabeth then walks toward Twigo to give herself up in the hopes that a kind stranger would not be killed because of her. After protecting her again, he introduces himself as Meliodas, captain of the Seven Deadly Sins. Alioni wakes up looking for Meliodas, but a knight reassures him that Twigo can handle himself. Yet Alioni says they should be worried as he had recognized Meliodas' dragon tattoo. Twigo attacks Meliodas from behind, but instead, Twigo is the one who gets hurt. As Meliodas stands, Twigo recognizes him and asks how he looks exactly the same. Twigo attacks again but does no damage. Meliodas counterattacks with his broken blade and causes the area to explode in a cloud of smoke and Twigo to shoot off into the distance. He smirks, reintroducing himself as Meliodas, the dragon's sin of wrath who leaded the seven deadly sins. After resheathing his sword, Meliodas explains to Elizabeth that he runs the bar to gather intel. He asks if she'll come with them, which she immediately agrees to. Twigo, surrounded by knights in a crater, tells them to call for reinforcements but Hawk's mom emerges to pick up Meliodas and Elizabeth. At Fort Salgales, a holy knight expresses his hopes that Twigo's report on seeing one of the seven deadly sins is real this time. In a flashback about the coup, holy knights break into the Lyonis' throne room for the king, while Elizabeth escapes. In the present, Meliodas makes Elizabeth the boar hat's waitress so she can gather information on the holy knights and the other seven deadly sins. Elizabeth asks what sort of crime the seven deadly sins committed to be hated by the public, but Meliodas doesn't give her a straight answer. They set up the tavern outside of Bernia village. Meliodas mentions that they have some of the finest ale, but the trio find out that a holy knight has cursed the village to stop their water supply. Gilfander had stuck a sword in the ground, which can only be removed by another holy knight. A ugly disgusting child named Mead comes up and says that his friends, the seven deadly sins, could easily fix it. 
However, the villagers grow angry at his cocky attitude, which had caused the mess. Once they start throwing rocks, Meliodas brings Mead back to the boar hat. Meliodas asks Mead what he meant when he said he knew the sins, but Mead doesn't answer. Elizabeth and Hawk return to the boar hat, and Elizabeth tells a story about how she, like Mead, was a prankster to get her father's attention. Mead then confesses that he acts that way because he's an orphan and an outsider. However, Mead decided to put a bug in Gilfunder's drink because Gilfunder was treating the villagers badly, not because he wanted their attention. He says he lied about being friends with the Sins and just assumed they were the good guys since they were being hunted down by the Holy Knights. Mead runs off after hearing commotion from the village. The villagers are arguing with two guards who are taking advantage of the knight's curse. Mead tries to pull the sword out of the ground, while the guards and villagers shout at him. The village elder reminds the villagers that the holy knights were the one who insulted their village, not Mead. They finally realize their mistake and try to help Mead with the sword, but are unsuccessful. Meliodas saunters into the village and nonchalantly pulls the sword out, causing the water to flow again. He throws the sword at the two guards, who run away. The villagers apologize to Mead, and everyone celebrates at the boar hat. While struggling with her waitress duties, Elizabeth learns about the Forest of White Dreams, a place so dangerous that not even holy knights want to enter. Back at Fort Salgales, soldiers report to Gilfunder that Meliodas had pulled the sword out of the ground. After hearing the news, Gilfunder throws a spear across 11.7 kilometers away toward Bernia village. Sensing the attack, Meliodas steps outside where Elizabeth is contemplating on the grass. Elizabeth talks through her troubles while Meliodas looks for the spear. Meliodas reminds her that her drive to find the sins gives her people a chance. Meliodas catches the spear and is pulled down the cliffside and into various buildings of the village. He redirects the spear right back to the fort, aiming perfectly for Gilfunder's head. Gilfunder, who moves out of the way, figures out that Meliodas is still alive because of that attack. Meliodas knows that Gilfunder will be chasing them, so he says they must leave Bernia as soon as possible. Elizabeth suggests hiding in the Forest of White Dreams, and Meliodas says there must be another sin to find there. In the forest, a young woman with a serpent tattoo sleeps soundly. The main characters soon arrived at the Forest of White Dreams that is said to even be avoided by the Holy Knights because of how dangerous it can potentially be. After walking for over three hours and having lost their sense of direction, they suddenly discover multiple copies of Hawk. All of the copies attempt to proclaim that they are the real one, until Meliodas easily defeats them. The mysterious monsters then decided to transform into copies of Elizabeth. In order to discover who is the real Elizabeth, Meliodas decides to instruct them to do some actions. And when he tells all of them to jump, all the fake copies of Elizabeth jumps up and the real one stays on the ground. With one attack, Meliodas defeats all the monsters that are revealed to be the prankster imps who love to play hide and seek. The monsters retreat and the characters decide to follow them, and finally discovering Diane of the Seven Deadly Sins. The prankster imps appears to be Diane's underlings and believe that Meliodas was a holy knight. Worried that Meliodas is a holy knight, the prankster imps decided to wake up Diane who was sleeping in the forest of white dreams. As soon as she woke up, Diane grabbed hold of Meliodas with her left hand, only to realize that Meliodas was her captain. Hawk and Elizabeth then realized that she was the sin of envy, Diane. As soon as Diane discovered that Meliodas was traveling with Elizabeth, she got jealous and threw him away, calling him a cheater. The impact of her thrust destroyed areas of the surrounding forest. She continues crying and rampaging until finally, she calmed down and listened to the reason why they were traveling. When Meliodas revealed that he had no memory of what had happened ten years ago, Diane explained what had happened. She told him that ten years ago, during the National Foundation Festival, the seven deadly sins were summoned by the Great Holy Knight, Zaratras. However, when they arrived at the meeting point, they only could discover his dead body, which was completely skewered with spears. The seven deadly sins were then surrounded by all the knights of the kingdom, and were then branded as traitors of Lyonis. After the recollection, Diane decided to help search for the seven deadly sins. Immediately afterwards, the group encounters Gilfunder of the Holy Knights who paralyzed them with his electrical abilities. After realizing that Gilfunder was a holy knight, she revealed he was like her elder brother. She became shocked to learn that he was the person who attempted to wipe out Bernia, and was then released from the electrical rings. When she demanded him to release the spell, Gilfunder ignorantly kicked Hawk away, and began to question Meliodas about whether he knows why the holy knights are after the heads of the seven deadly sins. He continues to answer his own question and states that he wishes to take revenge for his father Zaratras as well as surpassing him. 
Afterwards, Meliodas recognizes Gilfander as Little Gil, the son of the Great Holy Knight. In order to begin their battle, Meliodas breaks the electrical spell and draws his sword. He was able to deflect Gilfander's initial lightning slash, but was cut by his second from behind and subsequently fell onto the ground. Gilfander thought that he was dying and decided to ask for his last words. Meliodas took the opportunity to ask for the locations of the seven deadly sins and discovered the location of the fox's sin of greed, ban, and the grizzly's sin of sloth, king, from Gilfander. Immediately after receiving the information, Meliodas jumped back up and returned to enter the battle again. As soon as Meliodas discovered the locations of the sins from Gilfander, he stood back. He easily and swiftly dodged Gilfunder's attacks, attempting to quickly escape the battle and search for the seven deadly sins. When Gilfunder was about to deliver his finishing blow, Diane grabbed him with her hands and threw him away after her armband was burnt by Gilfunder's discharge of lightning. The Holy Knight flew into a chapel and injured priests and civilians who were praying to bring divine retribution to the Holy Knights. He remained unscathed and ignored the people who was wounded around him. After Gilfunder was thrown away, Meliodas and his group began traveling on Hawk's mother and discussing where they should head. In the end, they decided to go to the base dungeon because it was closer, even though the weird fangs were stationed there. Elizabeth grew concerned over Meliodas' wound from Gilfunder, however. He tried to reassure her that he was fine. He entered the boar hat and was then discovered by Elizabeth to have fainted on the floor. At the base dungeon, at the base dungeon, the weird ugly disgusting looking fangs are revealed to be located there in order to keep Ban confined. Ban began humming a tune, even with metal rods pierced into his body. As Elizabeth and Hawk rush to take Meliodas to the hospital, they are unknowingly being watched by one of the holy knights. Meliodas receives medical care, but Diane becomes determined to march to base to protect him from further danger. Elizabeth attempts to stop her, but Diane insists on sharing a flashback. In this memory, Meliodas once defended her from a group of stalking knights, making her feel like a cherished woman rather than a mere fighting machine. Diane then reveals her desire to be small for a day, allowing her to be in the same room as Meliodas. However, their conversation is abruptly interrupted by a cloud of poisonous insects wreaking havoc in the city, a clear indication of the Holy Knight's involvement. Despite her fear, Diane takes decisive action to end the plague, allowing her to pursue the Holy Knight. Meanwhile, Elizabeth and Hawk attend to Meliodas. To their horror, Hawk notices that Meliodas appears lifeless, and their fears are confirmed when a Holy Knight accuses the doctor of poisoning Meliodas as he enters the room. Galgius appears and attempts to take Elizabeth and Meliodas' sword back to Lyonis. Whilst attempting to take the sword, Meliodas awakens, with no effect of the poison showing proceeding to blast an aura that causes Galgius to make a hasty retreat. Meliodas regains consciousness and shows that his wounds have healed. The group eventually tracks down the knight, who initially feigns mercy before launching a surprise attack. During the confrontation, the doctor, who had tried to poison Meliodas, is revealed to have been protecting his daughter under orders. As the battle intensifies, Meliodas and the knight clash, with the knight displaying the ability to become invisible rather than teleport. Meliodas, with quick thinking, sets a clever trap that reveals the knight's invisibility, but the knight manages to escape. The group returns to the city, but it's too late for the doctor, leading to a moment of sorrow. Elizabeth's newfound determination is encouraged by Meliodas, and they embark on a journey to find the doctor's daughter. Along the way, they encounter Diane, who is under the influence of a spell and begins to chase them. And Meliodas also begins to hallucinate believing that Diane is the knight so the two begin to fight violently. Ban, in the meantime, navigates the prison and faces off against a holy knight. Meliodas and Diane are still fighting each other. Elizabeth shouts for them to snap out of it. And for a few moments they do, until the sound of the bell once again spurs them to fight each other again. The Holy Knight Frisia comes in, threatening the life of the shepherds, however Elizabeth steps in to protect one of them, heavily injuring herself in the process. It is then revealed that one of the shepherds is actually Ruin, and that he has been fooling them all this time. As Elizabeth gets beaten up by Ruin, she manages to knock off the bell that is causing the hallucinations. Ruin goes to punish Elizabeth further for doing so, but Meliodas quickly comes to her aid, thus beginning Meliodas' battle with Ruin, whilst Diane faces off against Freja. Both defeat their respective opponents, and the team continues their trek to base dungeon. Elsewhere, despite having been pierced in the chest, Ban is able to overpower Jude, and takes him out. Meliodas and Co finally enter base dungeon, although it is all a trap as Galgius locks them in with the eternal seal spell. Sins manage to find the doctor's daughter and Diane puts her safely in her backpack with Elizabeth. 
Dan appears and meets Meliodas after such a long time everything seems very tense between them and the hype gets all up in the air. But it turns out that the two are best friends and are very fond of each other and they do the typical teenage friend greetings. However, the reunion between Ban and Meliodas caused so much destruction that it completely destroyed the structure and nullified the spell. They all return to the hospital and discover that the doctor is alive and survived the mortal wound and that even he doesn't know what's going on although apparently Meliodas did since his wounds healed in the same way. Later that evening, the gang enjoys a meal courtesy of Dana, but an omen in the sky foretells of great disaster to befall Britannia soon. In Lyonis, it is revealed that King is alive and well, but he is working with Gilfander. Dan wakes up from a dream as Hawk calls everyone down. Elizabeth wakes up next to a rope-bound Meliodas. While they eat breakfast, Elizabeth asks Hawk to tie Meliodas looser next time. But Hawk refuses, saying that he'll have more hands than a teenage octopus. Meliodas chooses the gang's next destination to be the capital of the dead, where King is rumored to have gone. As they talk more and more about what the capital of the dead might hold, Ban falls asleep, and has flashbacks of when he tried to obtain immortality from the Fountain of Youth. His attempts are all stopped by a mysterious girl who blows him away from the fountain each time. After multiple attempts, both Bayan and the girl are fed up, and eventually start talking to one another. It is then discovered that the forest will die if the water is taken, after which Bayan stops all of his attempts. They also introduce themselves, with the girl's name revealed to be Elaine. The gang stops at a village said to be the closest to the capital of the dead, and split up to gather more information on both King and the capital of the dead. Ban discovers a pair of siblings, Ellen and Luigi, and offers them some food in return for information on the capital. Their meeting is interrupted by the appearance of King, who stabs Ban in the chest. A fight ensues, however it is broken up when King sees Diane, which causes him to run away. After being fed, Ellen opens up and says that, a priceless memory shared with the deceased will open the path to the capital. Having obtained a hint to getting into the capital of the dead, the others try to find memories with which to unlock the way, albeit with no success. It is only as Ban remembers back to a time with Elaine that the gang is granted access to the capital of the dead. King secretly follows along behind them as the siblings watch in awe as they all disappear. Upon entry, Ban spots what appears to be Elaine in the distance, who tries to runs away, however he gives pursuit, with King following in tow. Back at the village, a mysterious ugly disgusting female holy knight appears behind the siblings, noting that the capital of the dead does indeed exist. The mysterious holy knight is revealed to be Gilla, who threatens the kids and succeeds in gaining entry to the capital of the dead. Meanwhile, inside the capital of the dead, King intercepts Ban and manages to convince him that it really is. As he tells him that ten years ago, when they were framed for murdering the commander, King returned to his home to find it completely destroyed. At that moment King interrupts the story and explains that Elaine the Sacred Guardian was his sister. King petrifies Ban in an act of revenge for his sister, Elaine. Ban begins to remember when he and Elaine planned to escape from the forest. Since Elaine had not chosen that destiny for herself she just had to accept it. Ban was able to make Elaine reflect on her life but when the two were giving each other a hug, a fierce demon appears on the scene and wreaks havoc in the forest. Elaine warns Ban that he will not be able to defeat such a demon so she asks him to drink the potion of immortality and leave. But he refuses to leave her alone and begins to fight the monster, believing that it will be easy however the monster fights back. Back in the past, however the spirit of Elaine chooses to reverse the petrification, much to the surprise of King. As Ban and Elaine were having a heartfelt moment, the noise of a battle suddenly broke in. Ban remembered that Elaine had sacrificed her life for him. He had urged her to drink the elixir, but she had given it to him with a kiss and lost her life to a demon. Meliodas and the others have a run-in with Gilla. The battle begins between Meliodas and Diane fighting against Gilla. A little while later, Elaine clarified all of this to King and revealed herself to him. She asked King to protect Ban and lend him a hand. King decides to go help the Sins, who are still struggling in defeating Gilla. Without delay, King rushed to the battlefield to join the fight. With the appearance of King, the battle comes to a close as he overpowers Gilla with Chasty Fall. Their time in the capital of the dead seemingly up, Ban and Elaine have one more close moment, before being bid farewell by Ellen and Luigi, who are revealed to have been ghosts this entire time. In the world of the living, the group decides to leave before the Gilla wakes up. Meliodes, mischievously, draws an embarrassing picture on the knight's face before they depart. Rests, Elizabeth praises King's power as he was able to defeat Gilla single-handedly, whereas Meliodas, Ban, 
and Diane struggled. Guilt Hunter and Hosser meet with Commander Dreyfus, where Hosser urges to speed up the war. However, Dreyfus explains that they can't move forward until they deal with the deadly sins, with King rejoining them. Hosser underestimates the deadly sins, thinking they only have to fear four people. Dreyfus surprises him by revealing that Meliodas is immensely powerful, once single-handedly destroying a powerful kingdom. Hosser is shocked but still doubts the deadly sin's ability to defeat a new generation of holy knights. Guilt Hunter informs Dreyfus that Hendrickson, another captain, is gathering apprentices to train as holy knights. King shares the same information with his companions and expresses frustration that they've lost their legendary weapons. Meliodas sold his, Diane lost hers, and Ban was robbed while in prison. King tells Hawk that the sacred treasures, which were given to them by the King of Lions, allow them to use their powers to the fullest. Without these weapons, they can only use a small fraction of their power. Under the guise of summons from Hendrickson, Jericho and Twigo are taken underground and offered power through drinking demon's blood. However, if they're not compatible with the demon blood, they will die. The two accept this despite its risks and drink the demon's blood. Jericho is found compatible, and Twigo not. Meanwhile, Meliodas and the others arrive at Vasil for its annual fighting festival whose grand prize this year is Gideon, Diane's sacred treasure. As giants are banned from the festival due to an incident years ago, Diane stays back with Elizabeth for some girl time, while Meliodas, Ban, and King enter the competition to win back Diane's sacred treasure. Elizabeth and Diane are out in the forest outside of Vasil searching for anything that might be edible. Elizabeth stumbles upon a pile of mushrooms before a shadow looms over her. Diane hears Elizabeth's cry and comes running over to find a frightened Elizabeth and a large, purple mushroom creature. She taps it on the head and it squirts out pink smoke that engulfs them. Back in Vasil, the elimination round begins with the rules being that contestants have to push their opponents out of the ring. The eight contestants left standing will move on to the finals. The eight contestants left standing are Holy Knight Gryamor, a mysterious girl named Matrona. Holy Knight Hauser, Tezu. During their meeting, King finds out that Hauser, a Holy Knight, will be in the same round. However, neither King nor Hauser will have to fight each other. King will face an elderly man, and Ban and Meliodas will fight each other. Gryamor and Matrona step into the ring but Matrona is asked to remove her cloak to make sure she is not hiding any weapons. Underneath, Matrona is wearing Elizabeth's clothing raising Meliodas' suspicions. Gryamor and Matrona fight and Matrona ends up being the victor by sending Gryamor flying. Matrona ends up being revealed to be actually Diane and King asks how she ended up that size. She tells him about the mushroom they encountered. King says that they must have met a chicken Matango and it shrunk them because it felt threatened. Meanwhile, Hauser and Tezu go at it but Hauser uses his special ability and sends the latter up flying out of the ring. Veronica goes to find Gryamor, followed by Hauser. He asks the two what they are doing out here and learns that they are looking for Elizabeth. King goes up against Kane Barzad and loses after having been pushed out of the ring. The final round is Meliodas against Ban. Hauser learns from Gryamor and Veronica that King, Ban, and Meliodas are part of the seven deadly sins. Meliodas and Ban fight each other. They go head to head and it looks like Meliodas is going to win but Ban takes all his powers. Ban goes to deliver the finishing blow but Meliodas grabs and crushes his wrist and blasts him out of the ring. King and Diane saw how it happened but are concerned with the look of Meliodas's face when he did it. Next up is Diane against Hauser in the first match of the semi-finals. Diane runs into the ring but first hands over tiny Elizabeth to Meliodas. Veronica and Gryamor continue their search for Elizabeth. Diane tries to avoid Hauser's tornado attack because she does not want to destroy Elizabeth's clothes. Hauser sends a full-on cyclone at Diane but Diane beats him by turning into heavy metal. Meliodas goes up against Kane in the next semi-final. Kane reveals that he knew Meliodas in the past and is from Danafer, a kingdom that Meliodas allegedly destroyed. It is where Elizabeth was born. Kane asks him what possessed him to kill Liz, the woman he loved. Meliodas says that he tried to protect them and that this time he is not going to let that happen again. Kane asks him if he can trust Meliodas and Meliodas says that he did not betray the kingdom. Kane forfeits the round leaving Meliodas as the winner of the round. The final round is Meliodas against Diane. Meliodas asks if they should half-ass it since if either one wins they will still get the treasure. But then some women from the sidelines catcall Meliodas upsetting Diane who calls Meliodas a womanizer. Meanwhile, Gila, Jericho and Marmas are on their way to Vasil where Jericho wants to use her new power. Diane relentlessly punches Meliodas, who tries to convince her that he does not know who those women are. 
They continue to fight but suddenly freeze. Meliota shouts for the spectators to leave the place, and after this a rain of attacks is unleashed in the place. Gila and Jericho who are part of the new generation of sacred knights, violently attack the deadly sins and cause a lot of chaos in the place. Jericho attacks Ban, severely injuring him. Ban is surprised that his cuts are not healing. Meliodas goes up against Gila but is taken out by her chain reaction technique. King finds Ban and Meliodas unconscious and is attacked by Gila. He survives the attack and defeats both women. King tells Hawk to take care of Ban and Meliodas while he interrogates Gila and Jericho. Diane is upset when she learns that Gideon is missing. Hauser comes to fight her for past crimes but first, she looks after an old man. Diane is then attacked by Marmas and sent falling into a ravine. Hawk gets Elizabeth, Ban, and Meliodas to safety. While praying over the two unconscious deadly sins, Elizabeth returns to normal size just as Veronica and Gryamore walk by. Veronica gives Elizabeth her jacket to wear and proceeds to scold her for running away with the deadly sins. Veronica tries to take Elizabeth away but Meliodas stops them. Veronica pulls out Goddess Amber and activates it causing Meliodas to be sucked inside. Elizabeth snatches the jewel in Meliodas' sword and tells Veronica to bring him back, but she do not know how to do that. Grimoire captures Elizabeth in a shell but Ban tells him he will kill Veronica if he does not let Elizabeth go. King continues to fight Gila and Jericho but Love Helm saves them revealing himself to be Helbram. Helbram and King fight against each other although it looks like Helbram has the upper hand. Ban gets taken out by Jericho and Veronica is released from his clutches. Gila and Jericho tell Grimoire to release Elizabeth into their care. Veronica says no and while they are distracted, Elizabeth gets up and runs away. Veronica runs after her and shields her from an explosion made by Gila. This causes some fatal injuries, and she dies in Elizabeth's arms. Gila and Jericho are released from Grimoire's shield and come to retrieve Elizabeth once more. Elizabeth is crying over Veronica's body for Meliodas but Gila says he cannot hear her. Suddenly, the goddess Amber shatters letting Meliodas out, accompanied by a burst of dark energy. Meliodas attacks Gila and cuts off her hand to retrieve his sword. He sends another wave of magic towards her that knocks Gila out. Jericho saves her by performing a super recovery spell. Gila wakes up with her hand reattached and says that Meliodas is giving off disturbing magical energy. Ban asks Meliodas if it's really him but gets cut in half by Meliodas. Elizabeth and Hawk huddle together as Elizabeth wonders if that's really their Meliodas. Meliodas appears before her and sniffs Elizabeth before flying away. He goes to Helbram and proceeds to fight him. Helbram is just toying with Meliodas trying to see the depth of Meliodas' new power. He uses his hunter wisps to take him out and begins to jot down notes of what he's seen. Hauser stares into the chasm, upset that Marmas had cast her in there. Suddenly, a huge pig comes walking up with a house on its back and deposits Diane's clothes into the opening. Helbram and Meliodas continue to fight and it looks like Meliodas finally has the upper hand. However, Hendrickson lends Helbram some of his power and Helbram is able to defeat Meliodas. Ban grabs King and Elizabeth and runs away to get them to safety with Hawk following. Diane shows up and saves Meliodas from Helbram before he can take Meliodas away. Diane asks Helbram if it was him who hurt Meliodas and when he doesn't answer she uses her Mother Earth catastrophe technique to disrupt the ground. Helbram manages to get away with Gila and Jericho. That is until Diane's attack rips holes into their flying manta rays. The link between Helbram and Hendrickson is severed, leaving them to wonder if he died. Diane returns to the group and shows them Meliodas. Dan punches him as payback and Elizabeth hugs him asking him to not do that again. Gryamore, who is still holding Veronica, uses his shield to burst through the rubble. Elizabeth asks him to bury her near the lake that they used to play at and vows to stop the Holy Knights. Meliodas realizes that his sword has been stolen. Nearby, Helbram has managed to get Gila and Jericho to safety. He is happy because he stole Meliodas's sword, which is one of the keys to reviving the demon clan. Hauser learns that Veronica and Gryamor are dead although he can't believe it. He's also told that the delicate balance between the Hendrickson and Dreyfus factions is starting to crumble. Elizabeth vows to Veronica that things will be different, but Diane tells her that she is a useless ugly disgusting princess. Further Diane tells her that she'll have help from Meliodas and the other seven deadly sins. Nearby, King and Ban fight each other for practice so that they can take back the kingdom. Ban says that he'll save the kingdom then take the Horn of Sir Nunnos as payment. He wants to call on the goddesses to bring back Elaine. Meliodas promises to end the war that's been going on for over 3,000 years. An armor giant roams the forest with Alan. They take shelter in a cave when it starts to rain. 
a knight brings news to Gila, Jericho, and Helbrem about sightings of the armor giant in the Orden forests. Helbrem sends Don Roar to destroy the armor giant. Jericho is upset that Helbrem didn't send her and Gila but Gila says that they should use this time to rest up for the next battle. Gila goes to visit her brother, Seal, who got mugged on his way home with his monthly salary. After she puts him to bed, Gila goes after the thugs who harassed her brother and kills them. Meanwhile, the gang arrives and sets up shop. Meliodas sends Elizabeth to the village to get some herbs while he and the guys do some hunting. Diane has a rest. Holy knights arrive while Elizabeth and Hawk are in the village. They quickly hide behind a wall of rocks but are found by Alan who asks if they're playing hide and seek too. Ban and Meliodas make hunting a contest. Meliodas says that he's won because he captured a sword wolf although Ban disagrees with this. They ask King what he caught by find him sleeping on his pillow. They tell him to go find something else to bring back. He protests at first but then Ban mentions Diane and King decides to do it. Just then they hear a loud growl echo throughout the forest. Meliodas says that they should investigate where that sound came from. Alan tells Hawk and Elizabeth that he's looking for glue to fix armor since the armor giant has a gaping hole in his chest. They ask him if he's a friend of his but Alan doesn't know how to answer. Meliodas, Ban, and King find a field of the fallen vanguard. One of them tells Meliodas that Don Roar is going after the armor giant. Meliodas theorizes that the armor giant is Gowler. They make it to the armor giant before Don Roar manages to kill him. Just as they're about to fight, Alan arrives apologizing to the armor giant about not finding any glue. Then all hell breaks loose as the two groups go against each other. One fires a deadly arrow at the armor giant but Alan catches it and reveals himself to be Gowther, the goat sin of lust. While Don Roar would like to challenge the four deadly sins, they've come only for the armor giant and were asked to return with its head. Gowther cuts off the armor giant's head and hands it over to Don Roar to prevent any more fighting. Don Roar accepts the head and leaves. This leaves the four deadly sins alone to face the armor giant, who is surprisingly still alive. We learn that the armor giant was once human and to top it off, a holy knight. Elsewhere, Don Roar contemplates why Helbrem wanted the armor giant dead so badly and why he didn't send the new generation to take care of it. Gowther tells Meliodas and the others that he had the armor giant wear his armor to seal away the holy knight's magic. However, once the armor started to break the seal was broken. The armor giant attacks them and they try to hold him off. Meliodas goes to deliver the killing blow but the trapped holy knight pleads with him not to. Ban gets upset that Meliodas won't kill him and asks Gowther to but he says he is incapable of killing him as well. Ban goes to do it but Meliodas stops him telling him that there is still a part of the armor giant that's human. Meanwhile, Elizabeth and Diane wait for Meliodas and the deadly sins return. Cain arrives asking if the boar hat is open and is welcomed inside by Elizabeth, whom he mistakes for Liz. Ban uses his whip and pulls out the armor giant's heart. Cain tells Elizabeth about Liz. He also tells Elizabeth why Meliodas won't carry a sword around. Cain pulls out a sword and sets it on the bar. He says that it was a gift from Liz to Meliodas but that he accepted it on Meliodas' behalf. Meliodas is angry with Ban for killing the armor giant. Gowther points out that the Holy Knight is stuck in the illusion he created for him. We learn that he's actually Dale, Gilla and Zeal's long-lost father. Elizabeth takes the sword and runs off in search of Meliodas. Despite what Ban did, the armor giant is still alive and has transformed into a demon. Meliodas still doesn't want to fight him but Ban and King do. Elizabeth arrives with the sword and throws it to Meliodas. He recognizes it as the one that Liz was trying to give him. He catches it and uses it to destroy the demon. The group leaves to head back to the boar hat but Gowther stays behind and remembers when he first met Dale. Elizabeth meets up with the group and Meliodas thanks her for the sword. Elizabeth asks Gowther to join them on their quest. He accepts and Meliodas suggests that they get drunk to celebrate. Meliodas asks Gowther if he knows who assaulted him when they fled from Lyone's back when they were framed for wanting to overthrow it. Gowther says that he does know and that it was Merlin, the boar sin of gluttony. Meliodas asks why but Gowther says that he doesn't know why. Gowther goes on to air everyone's dirty laundry causing the group to get riled up. Meliodas tells him that it's probably not wise for him to delve so deep into other people's memories. Elizabeth asks Meliodas what kind of person Liz was. Meliodas tells her that they are the exact opposite but similar because they are both strong. Dreyfus asks Hauser if anything out of the ordinary happened during his absence. Hauser tells him that there have been reports of more holy knights joining the new generation. Dreyfus says that it is time for him to have a little chat with Hendrickson. Gilla and Jericho practice fighting and Gilla disarms Jericho. Gilla asks her why she is so distracted and Jericho says it is because she followed Don Roar and saw the seven deadly sins battle a monster. 
Jericho also tells her that she felt two kinds of magical powers emitting from the monster and one was of a holy night. Jericho shows her an amulet that she found on the corpse of the monster and Gilla gasps because she knows that it belonged to her father, Dale. Halbram and Hendrickson open up a gateway on the seal to the demon clan. However, it was not big enough for them to pass through because they are missing a fragment to undo the seal. Meliodas tells the group that he is going to break into the castle and get his sword back before going to look for the two remaining deadly sins. Meliodas tells him that the sword is actually a fragment of a ritual relic that was used to seal away the demon clan. Elizabeth wonders why Hendrickson and Dreyfus would want to bring back the demon clan. Hendrickson reveals that he wants to bring on a holy war. Dreyfus is upset but Hendrickson reminds him of how he helped kill his brother so that Dreyfus could become a great holy knight. Hendrickson asks that Dreyfus returns the favor or else he will kill him himself. A mage appears in the boar hat and kidnaps Elizabeth because she is the missing piece to breaking the seal to releasing the demon clan. Meliodas rushes out of the boar hat to go after her. Thayan and Gowther decide to go with him. Meliodas has Diane throw them to their destination. They land outside of the north gate and fight their way through to the castle. But before they reach the gate, they feel a large magical presence coming from the south. At the south gate, an army appears and its leader is Arthur, new king of Camelot. Arthur Pendragon of Camelot is at the south gate of Lyonis. Hendrickson says that he will take care of him and that Dreyfus can deal with the seven deadly sins. King Arthur is here to meet with the king but Hendrickson tells him that he's fallen ill. King Arthur tells them that his companion has the ability to cure the king. Hendrickson still tries to get them to leave but King Arthur refuses to do so. Elizabeth is transported to a locked chamber with Hawk. Hawk freaks out because he needs to go to the bathroom and knocks down the door. The two of them escape. Hauser is standing with other holy knights thinking about how he is glad Diane is not there. Dreyfus asks Helbram what Hendrickson is up to. Gowther uses his powers to hypnotize the charging crowd into fans instead of foes. They fawn over the seven deadly sins and the trio manage to get into the capital. Hendrickson attacks King Arthur but Arthur is skilled in fighting as well. Diane asks King if he thought that Meliodas would go to such great lengths for her if she were ever captured. King believes that he would. King summons Oslo and he uses him to transport them to Lyonis. Dreyfus teleports to Hendrickson's magical research center. Suddenly, they hear a loud noise from down below and when they drop through the floor to check what happened, they got amazed to find Diane there. Dreyfus asks Diane what she's doing here and she tells him to give her Elizabeth. Jericho attempts to kill Diane but fails because Diane used her sacred treasure to deflect it. Gilfunder uses his thunderbolt execution to harm Diane along with Helbram and Hauser joining in. Diane manages to survive their attacks by performing ground gladius. Dreyfus and Diane go toe-to-toe -to -toe but Dreyfus delivers a killing blow to Diane's chest, causing her to fall to the ground. Dreyfus asks Helbram if it is true that Elizabeth is in the capital and Diane confirms that it is as she tries to stand. This time Dreyfus sends Diane flying into the capital and Giller rushes after her because she is worried about zeal. The people of Lyonis begin to throw rocks at Diane because Dreyfus has called her their enemy. Diane almost gives up but remembers her promise to Elizabeth and decides to keep it. The city begins to be destroyed but it is not Diane who's doing it. It is actually Helbram. This upsets Gilla who questions whether or not the seven deadly sins really did betray the kingdom ten years ago. Seal suddenly runs out into the open and sees Gilla. But before he can run to her a building collapses above him. Diane gets hit by it as she protects Zeal from getting hurt. Dreyfus arrives and Jericho asks if she can give the killing blow. However, Gilla and Hauser stop them as they switch sides to protect Diane. The fight continues with Hauser and Gilla combining their powers to protect Diane and Gilla's little brother from the combined forces of Githunder, Helbram, Dreyfus, and Jericho. Hauser and Gilla uses their combined powers and creates a fire tornado, which knocks out Jericho and scratches Helbram. But Gilthunder and Dreyfus were left unharmed. Hauser and Gilla were overpowered and Diane was going to be attacked by Dreyfus when Gowther stepped in. Gowther managed to ensnare Dreyfus in his mind but Dreyfus was able to break out, but ended up severely wounded. With Gowther stabbed through the chest and left for dead, Dreyfus retreats with Gilthunder and orders Helbram to finish off the traitors and Diane. Back in the castle's dungeon, Elizabeth and Hawk try to escape from the castle's dungeon. While trying to find the exit, they come across Elizabeth's older sister Margaret and learn from Vivian that Margaret had chosen self-imprisonment because she was unwilling to abandon Gilfunder. Elizabeth did not believe that and as Vivian was about to get her, Hawk hit her and protected Elizabeth. As Vivian teleported Hawk away and knocked out Elizabeth, Vivian opened Margaret's cell, saying she would grant Elizabeth's wish and free Margaret, as long as she has the courage to escape. King arrives on the scene and asks who had harmed Diane. 
Upon learning that it was Helbram, he became enraged. The fight between King and Helbram, who was later to be revealed to be a fairy in close acquaintance with King, was brutal. Helbram had wrapped King up in tree roots, forcing King to watch as he made mincemeat out of Diane. Much to his surprise, King summoned up a powerful shield to protect Diane. Helbram questioned King as to why he would go so far for a half-dead girl, to which the latter replied that it was because Diane was precious to him that he could do so. King narrates a flashback where we learn that he'd lost his memory and only remembered the face of the man who attacked him. It turned out to be Helbram. He also tells us that he was found by a little giant girl, Diane, and taken care of by her. King reflects that that was a very happy time for him. One day, King is flying overhead looking for Diane when he spots her with a human. Later, he tells her that she shouldn't trust humans because it'll just come back and bite you in the butt. He remembers having the same conversation with Helbram, having warned him about humans too. When he wakes up, he tells Diane that Helbram was his best friend. Diane catches a cold and King says that he's going to go get some herbs. Diane asks him not to leave her alone. This makes him remember a conversation he had with his sister, Elaine, before he left to go after Helbram. Luckily, a hunter finds their cave and is able to give Diane the medicine she needs. King learns from the human that it's been a couple of decades since he last saw them which surprises King. Diane and King are playing around when Diane accidentally rips her clothes. King makes her an orange jumper to replace the rag that she used to wear. This reminds him of a time that he bragged about making his own clothes after having watched humans do it. Elaine reminded him about his duty of guarding the fairy king forest. They find a human village and run into the hunter's family. He refers to Diane and King as a couple prompting Diane to ask what that is. King explains the concept and Diane asks if he loves her the way other couples love each other. King says yes and that he promises to love her forever. King remembers when Helbram and other fairies were captured by a man with an eye patch and how he is the fairy king. The human village is attacked and King leaves Diane to go see what's going on. He promises to return. In the village, he finds all the humans slaughtered by the same man who attacked him. King learns that it's Helbram in disguise. A flashback shows that after King is defeated from Aldrich, Helbram kills Aldrich and obtains his form. Helbram tells him that the reason he slaughtered the humans was because they stole the wings from through Helbram and kills him. He doesn't return to Diane but instead takes responsibility for the killings and is sentenced to a thousand years imprisonment. In the present, King is facing off against Helbram. King asks him if he still wants to destroy all humans and Helbram says that he can't stop himself anymore. They fight using their magic and King wins. Helbram falls to the ground and King approaches him with Helbram's helmet. Helbram tells King that the helmet was supposed to be a gift for King and that he'd gotten it from one of the humans. King calls him an idiot just as Helbram dies. King apologizes to Diane for making her face that alone and she says that it isn't his fault. Diane comments that King's name Harlequin sounds familiar, but can't place it. King says that it was probably from a dream. Hauser asks King and Diane why they came to the capital if they weren't going to overthrow the kingdom. King tells Hauser that they came to rescue Elizabeth who's been abducted. Meanwhile, Hendrickson and Arthur Pendragon battle it out. Hendrickson is suspicious of Arthur because he realizes that he might know about the imprisonment of the king, the kidnapping of the princess, or the plan to resurrect the demons. Hendrickson uses Hellblaze wave to finish off Arthur but it is repelled by Meliodas. Meliodas tells Hendrickson that he's not leaving without Elizabeth. Meliodas and Hendrickson come face to face. Meliodas asks him to give Elizabeth back to him but Hendrickson says that it isn't possible. They begin to fight each other. Gilfander remembers when Meliodas helped teach him how to fight. Gilfander says that he'll never be good enough to become a holy knight but Margaret says otherwise. Gilfander remembers this as he carries the Grand Master Dreyfus. He asks Dreyfus what Galther made him watch back there and Dreyfus says his greatest sin. He tells Gilfander to return to the battle and that he'd like to be alone for a while. Gilfander leaves and is followed by the mage who tells him that Grafus is weak and that Hendrickson is the future. The mage is contacted by Hendrickson and she sees through his eyes that he's facing Meliodas. She sends Gilfander to help him. The battle ends up being Gilfander and Hendrickson versus Meliodas and Arthur. Gilfander goes up against Meliodas and appears to have the upper hand but Meliodas uses his demonic power to stop him. Hendrickson and Arthur continue their fight but Hendrickson manages to burn Arthur. The flame won't go out until Merlin appears to help him. Elsewhere, the group wonders where Ban is. He's gone and found a secret tunnel that leads downward. Elizabeth wakes up and is in the same chamber as her father. She hugs her father and the mage warns her to enjoy the reunion while she can because soon Gilfander is going to beat Meliodas. Gilfander remembers when Meliodas was training him and how one time he left for an expedition. 
he remembers asking to be taken along with him because if he stayed then he'd remain weak. Meliodas asks him what he's supposed to be doing and Gilfander says protecting Margaret. Meliodas tells him that he can't leave Margaret to go with him. In the present, Meliodas and Gilfander continue to fight. Hendrickson joins in having defeated Arthur. Hendrickson calls for the maids to come join them and she leaves Elizabeth, but not before telling her that she'll say goodbye to Meliodas for her. Meliodas is outnumbered three to one. Margaret climbs a tower to get a better view of the battle. In her mind, she begs Gilfander to stop fighting Meliodas. Meliodas spots Margaret as she jumps from the ledge but sends an attack to her which reveals a monster that he destroys. This leaves him open to attack and he's struck by Hendrickson, Gilfander, and the mage's magic. Gilfander remembers the words that Meliodas told him to repeat, I am now more powerful than any of the seven deadly sins. He turns against Hendrickson and cuts off his arm now free of the curse. Margaret floats down into Arthur's arms. Gilfander asks Meliodas to let him handle the rest since he can finally take revenge for the murder of his father. Gilfander attacks Hendrickson and appears to finally destroy him. Margaret wakes up in Gilfander's arms. Meliodas thanks Arthur for his help. The mage is upset and tells them that it can't end this way. Vivian is shocked when she realizes that Merlin is one of the seven deadly sins. Dan finally finds the horn of Sir Nunnos. He asks it to bring back Elaine and to take him instead. He doesn't get a response but Hawk appears and asks him where Elizabeth is. Elizabeth is with her father who tells her that they're going to be separated again soon. He knows this because of his power to see into the future. He tells her that he'll soon be rescued with the help of a crimson boar. Hawk explains to Ban how he came to be down there with the horn. He tries to get Ban to leave but he says that he has more to do. Suddenly, the horn begins to glow and agrees with him. It tells him that it'll take some time for them to return to their full power, having lost it during the ancient war. Ban asks if it's true that they grant wishes to anyone. The goddesses tell him that they'll bring Elaine back but not in exchange for his life. Instead, they'll give him a mission. Hawk thinks the whole thing is pretty sketchy but Ban agrees and tells the goddesses that he'll do whatever they want. The goddesses want him to kill a certain person. Ban asks who it is and the goddesses say that it's Meliodas. Jericho wakes up to Gilla and Zeal kneeling over her. Gilla reveals that the seven deadly sins beat them and that there is no need to fight them anymore. Gilla asks Jericho to tell her why she drank the demon blood. Merlin asks Vivian where Elizabeth is and she tells them that she's in the king's room. Merlin teleports them to outside the room because Vivian has encased it in a protective spell that can't be broken. Merlin breaks it using absolute cancel and Meliodas is reunited with Elizabeth. Dreyfus arrives and asks what's going on. Gilfander tells him about how he beat Hendrickson in battle and how he wasn't able to repent for the sin he'd committed. Dreyfus asks what sin and Margaret reveals that she knows that the two of them killed Zaratras. She says that she told Gil about it but that Vivian overheard them and put a guard on them so that they'd do her bidding. Dreyfus admits to the crime but Meliodas asks what that has to do with what's going on right now. Dreyfus says that all this was to start a holy war. Vivian is upset about losing Gilfunder but an undead Hendrickson tells her to take back what is hers. Dreyfus tells them that Hendrickson wasn't the same after they committed that murder. Dreyfus says that all he wanted was to be a father that his son could be proud of. Elizabeth reveals that Gryamor is alive. The king then removes his title of Grand Master and tells Dreyfus that he'll await sentencing in the dungeon. The king then collapses from strain and Merlin says that she can treat him but that she needs to take him to Camelot. Elizabeth agrees to this after seeing Merlin's boar tattoo. Arthur asks Meliodas for his help back in Camelot but Meliodas says that he'll get to it when he can. Arthur, Merlin, and the king disappear just as the castle blows up around those remaining in the room. Everyone is alright although Dreyfus is missing. Hendrickson and Vivian arrive at the castle. Hendrickson has awakened the demon blood in the Holy Knights. The seven deadly sins are talking about finding the others when Jericho and Gilla collapse. Jericho says that she has no regrets drinking the demon's blood because power is power. She then transforms into a large monster. Diane keeps her occupied with Gowther moves Zeal and Gilla out of the way. Jericho isn't the only one to transform into a monster. Lots of other Holy Knights have transformed as well. Hendrickson arrives having also taken the demon blood but because he was compatible with it, he hasn't turned into a monster although he looks bigger than before. He tells Meliodas to hand over Elizabeth. Ting attacks him but is deflected by Helbram, who Hendrickson has brought back to life. Helbram attacks King and Hendrickson attacks Hauser. Gilfander and Meliodas team up to attack Hendrickson but Vivian takes Margaret and Elizabeth captive. Distracted, Hendrickson cuts Gilfander and stabs Meliodas. Elizabeth tells Hendrickson not to kill them and in return, she'll go with him willingly. 
Before she leaves, she tells Meliodas to remember the promise he made to her. The promise to continue finding the seven deadly sins even if Elizabeth died along the way. Hendrickson takes Elizabeth away. Meliodas tries to follow but is blocked by Ban and Hawk. Ban attacks Meliodas but Meliodas survives despite losing his arm. Meliodas reattaches it and his demon powers surface. Ban asks Meliodas if he's from the demon race. Meliodas doesn't respond to Ban's question so the two of them face off. Hawk tells Meliodas about the deal Ban made with the goddesses. This catches Meliodas off guard and Ban is able to hit him. Ban reveals that the goddesses told him everything and how Meliodas was buddies with the guys that killed Elaine. Meliodas returns to normal and tells Ban to kill him. Meanwhile, Diane is still trying to hold back Jericho. Hauser is being pursued by other monsters, and King and Helbram are fighting up above. Gowther is also trying to keep Gilla from transforming. Hendrickson and Elizabeth run into Dreyfus. Dreyfus tells him that he's going to atone for the wrongs that he's done by stopping Hendrickson. Ban goes to kill Meliodas but Meliodas attacks Ban. He tells Ban that he can't abandon Elizabeth and that he's not just going to let him kill him. Hawk tries to talk some sense into Ban but Ban says he needs to take this chance to see Elaine again. Hawk tells him that if they're lying then he's going to lose his best friend. Ban tells them that without Elaine he's living in hell. Meliodas agrees that they can fight after this is all over but for now, they have to do their duty as the seven deadly sins. Ban agrees to this and Meliodas asks Hawk to take him to where Elizabeth is. Ban goes to help Gilthunder and Diane by throwing a hyper-recovery marble at them. King continues to fight Helbrum as he tries to convince him to stop. Helbrum tells King to just kill him and that if it's him he'll be fine. Gustav goes looking for Jericho. She finds him and crushes him with her new hands. She screams at this and begs for someone to kill her. Hendrickson and Dreyfus continue to fight each other. It's a bit difficult for Dreyfus as Hendrickson has a regeneration power now. Both fire magic at each other but it collides and explodes. Hawk is racing towards them with Meliodas on her back. The rubble clears but instead of seeing Hendrickson, Dreyfus sees that Elizabeth has been hurt. He rushes to her side but Hendrickson appears and they continue to sword fight. Hendrickson breaks Dreyfus's sword and proclaims that the fight is over. Gilthunder saves Gustav from Jericho. Jericho begs Diane to kill her. Helbram begs King to kill him. King summons a sunflower and the beam it shoots out destroys Helbram completely. Ban says that he'll kill Jericho but instead saves her by destroying the demon she'd inhabited. The seven deadly sins regroup and decide to go help Meliodas save Elizabeth. Ban and King, meanwhile, will stay behind and rid the city of other demon monsters. The Dawn Roar arrives and decides to help. Hendrickson melts Dreyfus and he blows away just as Hawk and Meliodas arrive. Meliodas grabs Elizabeth and puts her on top of Hawk and sends them both away. Meliodas and Hendrickson proceed to fight each other. Diane and the gang arrive just in time to help along with the Holy Knights. Meliodas, King, and Diane all attack Hendrickson but he continues to stand up and fight. Hendrickson knocks Ban into a wall adjacent to them. Ban pulls himself out and asks Hendrickson where he got that and makes it so that the wall comes tumbling down. Inside is a demon and Hendrickson says that that creature is the source of it all. Hendrickson stands before the demon's corpse. The seven deadly sins can't believe it. Gowther tells them that he senses the same magic coming from the corpse as he felt coming from the new generation. Hendrickson tells them that they discovered the corpse 20 years ago. Hendrickson attacks the sins by using the power of the red demon. Ban gets impaled by purple tendrils and rushes towards Hendrickson. He tells Hendrickson that he killed the red demon all those years ago as he smashes him into the ground. Ban then uses his nunchucks and destroys the demon corpse. The sins decide to go down the hole Ban created and leave Diane above to act as a lookout. They follow a trail of blood that leads to Hendrickson. Behind him are the remains of the grey demon. He takes a sample of blood from the corpse and injects it into himself. It transforms him into a dark grey demon with horns and wings. Above, holy knights begin to question if Hendrickson was behind the attack on the city and if they were behind framing the sins. Gilfunder says that it doesn't matter because it was the sins that saved them. Suddenly, there's a blast that sends Diane flying as Hendrickson and the sins emerge from below. Hendrickson begins to attack the holy knights who try to fight back but are killed easily. Don Roar jumps in to help along with Gilfunder, Gilla, and Hauser but their attacks don't have any impact on Hendrickson. Elizabeth wakes up and begs everyone to run because Hendrickson is too strong. They continue to fight but Hendrickson slaughters them. Meliodas is left standing but he is guarding Elizabeth. He collapses and Hendrickson sends an attack called Dead End that will kill anything it instantly touches. He hurls it towards Meliodas but Hawk steps in the way. He sacrifices himself so that Meliodas can save Elizabeth. Elizabeth throws herself on top of Hawk and begins to wail. Suddenly, a bright light emerges and begins to heal everyone. 
It's coming from Elizabeth as she has awakened the druid priestess blood in her veins and is an apostle of the goddesses. Outside of the city, a healed Veronica watches the fight. Elizabeth asks him why he's doing this and Hendrickson says it's revenge for them locking away the demon race. Hendrickson does a dark nebula attack but Elizabeth says that she won't let him hurt anyone else and produces her own ball of light. It eradicates Hendrickson's attack and heals everyone in the vicinity. Hendrickson is hurt but not enough to stop him. Don Roar and the Holy Knights prepare themselves to attack again. Hendrickson somehow makes Gilfander freeze and goes to attack him but is blocked by Meliodas who punches Hendrickson. This knocks him to the ground and Meliodas says to never give up because the seven deadly sins are here. The seven deadly sins attack Hendrickson as the Holy Knights watch. Meliodas tells Gowther to beam instructions into the other people's minds. Meliodas fights Hendrickson one-on-one -on -one while the others attack him from the sidelines. Meliodas gets hit by the attacks too and it looks like he's willing to sacrifice himself as long as it destroys Hendrickson. But then Meliodas attacks using Revenge Counter which has become supercharged since he absorbed all of the attack's powers. Unfortunately, by using this attack he might self-destruct since he is unable to control so much power. Hendrickson tries to fly away but Gryamore encloses him in a sphere. Hendrickson breaks free but Meliodas delivers the attack. Hendrickson is blown to smithereens. Meliodas falls to the ground severely injured but alive. Elizabeth rushes to his side and they share a meaningful look before they are interrupted by the king. The Holy Knights fall to their knees and beg the king to punish them for disregarding his plea to avoid a holy war. The king sentences them to continue to being holy knights in order to restore the kingdom and protect the people. The king thanks the seven deadly sins for protecting the kingdom despite having been framed and for taking care of his daughter. The king also commends his daughter for finding the seven deadly sins and for her strength. Elizabeth begins to cry because she wasn't strong enough to save Hawk. Meliodas tells Elizabeth that Hawk knows she did everything she could. Ban apologizes to Hawk's corpse for being mean. Merlin asks Galther what happened to the armor she gave him and he tells her that it's broken. Merlin says she'll get him a new set right away. Meliodas promises Hawk more scraps if he'll just come back. Hawk's corpse disintegrates and reveals a tiny Hawk that is very much alive. Everyone celebrates. Meliodas and Elizabeth hug but are interrupted by Veronica. Elizabeth runs to her older sister and hugs her surprised but glad that she's alive. Elizabeth asks if they can go home now and Meliodas says yes. Later, Merlin tells Meliodas that she can't find the coffin of eternal darkness. She tells him that a strange bird-like creature was spotted flying over the city shortly after he defeated Hendrickson. It was flying south. Merlin tells him that she's going to stick around and help find the coffin. The kingdom of Lyones is gradually being rebuilt. Diane finds King and shows him that she's temporarily small due to a potion that Merlin made. King sees this as his chance to ask her to go to the festival with him but instead tells her to ask Meliodas. Diane surprises him and asks King instead. Jericho is upset that she doesn't have magical powers anymore but thankful that she isn't a monster. She owes it all to Ban but gets upset when she thinks about him. Gilla approaches Jericho and Jericho tells her that she's lucky that she got to keep her magical powers. Gilla says she owes it all to love and Gowther, who waves from inside Gilla's house. Gilfander goes to visit Meliodas, Ban, and Hawk at the Boar Hat. He tells them that he's going to leave the capital because he feels guilty for what he did while cursed. He says that he's going to travel to other regions and help those who need it. Fireworks light up the sky as Elizabeth tells us that her journey finding the seven deadly sins has come to an end. While sharing a meal with the king and her sisters, Elizabeth learns that Meliodas and the sins are leaving that same day. The king forbids her from seeing Meliodas so she can't say goodbye. Incidentally, Meliodas shows up and tells Elizabeth that they still have one more sin to find. He invites her to come with them and she says yes. Elizabeth is reunited with the sins. Ban tells Meliodas that he's leaving the group to see the world but that he'll come back. Meliodas tells Merlin that he has a bunch of questions about that night ten years ago. She says it's a long story and Meliodas replies that he can't wait to hear it. In the past, Meliodas stands over Liz as she dies. She promises that they'll meet again. Watch this next video, I will see you on the next one.